Hello, one and all. Welcome to another episode of the Meadows and Makers podcast, brought to you here on MSP Waves. My name is Greg Dowd. I'm also known as Make It Stuff on the Steam and Hive uh, ecosystem. And this show is all about trying to move towards self-reliance and trying to adopt that into your own life and give you some tools and some things that are that I'm learning along along in my journey and then bringing on interesting guests and people that, that have some cool things to say, uh, doing some interesting stuff, and hopefully to inspire you to uh, to go out and take the actions in the world to move towards your own self-reliance and just uh, just get away from the current system and you know be be the system. <laughs> And so, uh, just a little housekeeping up front to get things uh, get things out of the way is that uh, the views and opinions that are expressed on the show are my own and those of my guests, and they do not reflect on MSP Waves and the wonderful people that keep this place going. And so, uh, one other thing that I like to do for the show is just a, a motto, a little motto I keep in my heart is that I will be an inextinguishable light of possibilities for myself and others. So, with all that being said, um, today's show, uh, I'm going to be bringing on returning guest Robbie Olson, and we are going to just have a conversation, and you guys are going to cl- come along for the ride here. And so Robbie is a fellow homesteader and he's a homesteader inventor, a man of many talents and has been my mentor doing, doing stuff with aquaponics. So, and, 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 uh, and all that stuff. So welcome everybody to the show. I see we got, uh, Patient Zero, we got Fox, uh, Fox it that's here, and thank you guys for being here. And Rondon, and let's. Uh, Patient Zero says MSP waves totally liable if you overheat your the solar panels, and uh, because of making stuff's advice. <laughs> there you go. Uh, no, they're not. That's all me. So, <laughs> so anyway. Robbie, how's it going, man? How are you doing? Yeah, yeah, so. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, uh, <clears throat> looks like I'm having some audio issues. Uh, let me see if we can figure this out. Can you, can you guys, can you guys hear, uh, can you guys hear me? And, uh, if, if not, uh, c- uh let's see, can, Can you hear Robbie (laughs) now that I kind of played with my, played with my desktop audio? Let's see. Woo. Uh, oh, hold on here. Let's see. All right. Now can everybody hear? Now, now can everybody hear Robbie? All right, Robbie, let me see. Let me see. If you Woo! Can. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> so nobody, nobody heard what I was talking about about the sawmill, I suppose. So. Yeah, yeah, I guess not. So, uh, yeah, I think I, I think I changed that. 
and I think it's I think it's gonna be okay. So we'll just uh, now they can hear you. So all right, there we go. Sorry guys, I goofed up on my OBS settings. So that happens, and uh, my bad. Uh oh. Uh, no. <laughs> oh no, you did. I almost. <laughs> <laughs> I almost made another oopsie there. Almost closed out of my OBS. That would have been disastrous. So, <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, you were telling telling me that you you're getting started helping Lee out on his property and and getting some some stuff lum, uh, lumber milled out there and all that and uh, and and you got your aquaponics what? you got your aquaponics system fully up and running and everything's uh, cranking out some veggies and stuff for you right now. Yeah, the aquaponics was really a little bit different this year. Uh, I started out with a small population, and I'm geared up for a large population in my in my fish. So I have more filtration than I actually needed at the beginning, and then I had a little problem. I couldn't figure out why things were not uptaking nutrients on the plant side, and come to find out, it was uh, a little too alkaline. So uh, I started uh, checking everything, and the doggone rainwater this year is more alkaline than last year. Really? Uh, so, yeah, so when I went in and added my calcium carbonate, it made it too much. Fortunately, because I have the flower pot in there the way I do, I was able to go scoop it back out and flush the system and get the pH back down. But um, it really kind of blew my mind that... Uh, you know, normally your pH on the rain comes in around 6.7, 6.8. And uh, for whatever reason, this last two or three times I've got rain and captured it, it's coming in at 7.1 and 7.2. And uh, so with the advent of the calcium carbonate in there, it was pushing it to 7.3 or 4. And because of that, the plants were not uptaking like they're supposed to. Okay. So um the ph is a pretty important thing to watch out for if you're trying aquaponics and your fish are not eating or if your plants are not doing well then check your ph okay <clears throat> okay yeah yeah so right now I, I keep having issues um i keep having issues with mine I, you know we've talked about this i got those cone, cone tanks over here at the the folks place and i think the uh I'm, I've, 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 I've got, a, got another solution they keep falling down and they keep leaking out of the uniseals that i have on there and and i just uh need to beef up the structure that that uh is holding them and it probably was the it probably yeah. was worth it to get those or build something out of metal a metal frame of some kind because uh, of everything. That yeah, if I had it to do over again with those cone tanks, I spent a lot of time trying to get my stand together. And I think if I had to, had it to do over again, I'd go ahead and just buy the steel tank, the stand that they sell for 75 bucks or whatever. You'd be money ahead. Um, yep. Yep. So, so yeah, man. Uh, we haven't really caught up since this whole hysteria hit and and how uh how how are you dealing with all this and how is uh how has it affected what what you've got going on and are you you know are you heightening what you're doing or uh what's uh how have you reacted to all this yeah well i mean we've uh we've stepped up uh we've just what we started doing is every time we leave now we go by the store and buy something, some kind of storable food, whether it's canned food or whatever. And, you know, I normally am not a big proponent for that, you know, because I want to be organic with everything. But, uh, uh, you know, we've kind of got this potential for a food shortage on the horizon. And I want to be able to weather through the storm of that thing. And so we've been doing that. and. As far as uh, economics goes, you know, my wife's beauty shop got closed down because of the that virus stuff. And uh, of course they finally 
released it to open back up. And, you know, fortunately in the meantime, the sawmill was able to keep us going and we're able to get things going out. But we've, we've been drifting away from the, uh, the normal mode of operation that most people work under anyway, where they live week to week. And it's all about making the paycheck and we've got away from that so that uh, we still have bills like everybody else, but we're just not inundated with so many bills that we can't keep up. Um, and then we stopped doing frivolous spending on stuff too. So, but as far yeah. as the virus goes, that's we were able to weather through that. And then now we've got this stupid riding going on. Yeah. Um, uh, down there where, where her beauty shop is in Gardendale, it's right outside of Birmingham. And, Last week, they had to close down early on a, I think it was Friday or something. One of the days last week, they had to uh, close down at like 4.30 because these dead gun protesters and riders started showing up just a, you know, a quarter mile away. And they had police there from county, state, city, multiple other cities, multiple other counties and, uh, there's a drug store right next door to where her beauty shop is. So the police was telling her, so, well, you might want to close down because if it does get Harry Carey, they'll be over here at this drug store. Mm. And, uh, so, and now the place has got a day again, seven o'clock curfew, which was normally their close time, but now they're having to close at six. So we're just having to adapt with the thing. But, uh, as far as this, protesting thing goes uh you know we have a constitutional right to get out and protest but that's not what's going on it's being these protesters have been taken over by these idiot antifa people and uh they're hell-bent on escalating this to something else yeah well you know, of course i don't I, I don't think i have to tell anybody that you know <clears throat> yeah i made a video recently on youtube and just talked about how you know the 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 anger is righteous but channel the anger into something positive imagine imagine if everybody started planting guerrilla gardening and doing guerrilla gardening in the cities like you know took the opportunity for these riots to go you know go out and plant a bunch of fruit trees in different locations and and just stop paying taxes. Stop paying your income taxes. You know, stop if you don't want to. If you don't want to support the state and you don't want to support police or whatever, just stop paying taxes. You know, stop paying your property taxes. Just stop yeah. paying taxes as a as a mass protest. You know, that's the 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 most effective way is to vote with your dollar. Buy local. Barter with your barter with people. You know, uh, just use all means. Well, buying local and bartering has been how we've made through it, made it through all of this stuff. Uh, because, you know, we are able to barter several things, uh, for wood, uh, using that sawmill and, and now we've been bartering people, some vegetables here and there, but, um, uh, yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, well, um, yeah, so Solo said if you stop paying property tax, your property would be auctioned off. So uh, that, there are methods that you can get around the property tax, uh, I believe, but uh, I don't have the full tips on, on that currently. But uh, I'm looking into the possibilities of how you can protect your property through uh, a trust that that may be a possibility uh of putting the land in the name of a trust of some kind um anyway i think there are ways of doing it well the the system definitely has legal loopholes built in because the people in the know use those loopholes all the time um whereas the tax may not be completely gone it'll be so minute and small that it's uh absurd you know you'd easily be able to pay it um the only way that i know of that you get around paying taxes period is to go through the uh declaration of sovereign citizen 
Um, there's a legal movement you can do where you can become a sovereign citizen and you have no taxes at all on anything, no property taxes, no anything. But uh, the system definitely does not like you doing that and they will target the shit out of you if you try or, or if you do it. And then what they do is remove you out of the system so that you have no driver's license, no ID, no anything. And they basically lock you out of the economy. Um, at least that's their, their theory. But right. legally, uh, this sovereign citizen movement uh, could be done too. And if you had the entire country file for sovereign citizen, then of course they'd probably just declare open warfare on everybody. But uh, well, I mean, what what cho the choices coming up here? Uh, I really think that we're going to have to make some tough choices here, and it may have to come to: Do we want to pass? Do we want to pass on a system of total technocratic control, which looks like what's being rolled out here? And, and to me, that's that's the direction. Well, the there's definitely a, an attempt. There's definitely an attempt at it. And, you know, if you look at Antifa, there's a lot of parallels in history with Antifa. You had the Bolsheviks. They use the same identical thing that Antifa is doing. You had the brown shirts with the Nazis. You had the Mussolini black shirts. Uh, Mao had his his group too, and I can't remember what they called them, but basically they would go out into the public like this, stir up trouble, and it's a false flag psyop operation because they'll they'll dress up as a soldier and then they'll go out and shoot a civilian and then they'll have an outrage protest that they pay for where they'll riot and then they'll go back and dress up as a, a cop and shoot somebody else and then back and forth and back and forth until you get the population so worked up that they get this chaotic regime change and just as soon as the regime changes the perpetrators the people that were involved in all of this false flag are immediately executed and taken care of. Uh, it's happened over and over and over in history, and Antifa's no different. It's the same thing. Uh, yeah. So yeah. you can pretty much know what their playbook is by looking at history. Uh, it's the Hegelian dialectic, and I, you know, I was hanging out with some people yeah. last night and, and talking about all, the, all this, actually, with them. Uh, and, and, you know, just uh, once, once they kind of told them that, you know, I told them they – it's always the same thing, problem, reaction, solution. And, it, and they can see that. Like, uh, people, people see that. And, and there's a lots of interesting things coming out about this whole George Floyd murder uh, by this cop and everything. Um, you know, there's really fishy things that happen when you look at that video uh, where they're pulling the guy up and, and, and after he's supposedly dead and everything that, uh, you know, they're not tr trying to protect his neck. It doesn't look like the guys that are pulling up in the ambulance are even EMTs. It looks like they're, yeah, they're just they're other cops. Him around and, uh, you know, uh, since when does that happen? I mean, yeah, uh, of course, you know, the other side will make the argument. Well, see, they're violating on all sides. They're violating the law on all sides. Well, if they are, it's just so blatant. Then why in the crap didn't they stop these people from videotaping it? Or, you know, videoing it. Uh, there ain't no tape anymore, but um, you're not going to stand there while multiple people video you killing a guy. Another thing that came up that I saw that kind of blew my mind was you had three separate incidents in Europe that were identical, identical pose, identical thing where the police pinned the guy on the ground, had the same knee down, choked him to death whole camera angle, identical, everything. Different perpetrator, different police officer, but it was identical across the board at three separate places at the same time in Europe. Uh, yeah. You know, nobody's talking about that. And then not only that, but you had Antifa gather up 3,000 people and they attacked the U.S. Embassy in... Uh, Athens, Greece, with rifles and Molotov cocktails. 
Now, they're doing that in Athens, Greece, over something that happened in Minneapolis? Uh, it ain't adding up, folks, you know. Uh, yeah. It's a coordinated effort. It's being coordinated by, by these globalist people who want to bring about regime change. And we've said it a million times over and over and over. This is all about global governance. It's about tearing down any democracy that's out there so that they can bring in a global governance and reduce the population. Yeah, yeah. And I, you know, I think one of the big things is that they were losing the narrative on the COVID-19 uh, bullshit and, and, yeah. you know, seeing everybody starting to see like, well, damn, this thing's less, you know, uh, it's not as bad as the, even the seasonal flu. And, uh, it's nothing more than a, you know, well, they got caught. Cold. Yeah. They got caught in a quandary with that damn COVID because, <laughs> you know, when it, when it first come out, when it first come out, um, you know, my God, it was horrible. You know, they had all of this stuff and showing all these people dropping dead and all of this dead gum stuff going on in Italy and China and all this. Then it got to the United States and they started ramping up with this thing. And then people started questioning whether or not it was man-made. And so as soon as the doggone paper trail started surfacing about the weapons lab from Maryland to North Carolina to China, then all of a sudden it started backtracking because they couldn't have this, this pandemic go wide open and kill a bunch of people at that point, because if it did, now there's going to be a public outcry for people saying, holy shit, this was man-made. So that they, they shot themselves in the foot, you know, with this thing. Uh, they could have, they could have easily kept it out of the country to start with, but they, they fomented it, spread it around this, that, and the other in order to create this pandemic yeah, or plandemic as some call it. And then once it got up to a certain point, people started questioning whether they was no longer believing the narrative that it come from a, uh, a bat, you know, where somebody bit into a damn bat brain and got it you know, from a wet market <laughs> that just happened to be one block over from the damn uh, weapons laboratory in Wuhan. Uh, and, and, and yet yeah. still people want to listen to what the governments and these organizations have to say when they flip-flop back and forth on what they're telling people. You know, at first I believe Fauci was coming out and saying that it's this ineffective to wear masks and all this stuff and... Yeah, don't wear your mask. And now, all of a sudden, everybody's got to wear a mask. <laughs> but at um, the beginning, you know, and, and if you look at this, it probably really all ties together. Uh, in the beginning, uh, you had the CDC and Fauci and that bunch out there saying, even the World Health Organization, saying, well, this is not, we're not even sure that this can even be transmitted from person to person. Nothing to worry about. Nothing to see here. We got to let these people into the country. Otherwise we're racist bigots. Uh, yeah. So they just brought them in by the droves and they, there was even a, a, a lawsuit filed by Napa, California filed a lawsuit against the federal government and the CDC because they brought 200 COVID-19 positive people in, had them at an airport and was planning on taking them to a nursing home and dropping them off. And the, the city filed a lawsuit against the, the CDC in order to stop it. And they finally did stop it. And they wound up holding them at the Air Force Base there instead of releasing them. But uh, this was at the same time that they were saying that it's not contagious. And then within a few weeks after that, the narrative flipped, like you said. Look how contagious this is. Oh, my God, you know, people are going to die. They're going to do this, that, and other. Um, and then you had them, it's not effectual to wear a mask, but at the same time they were saying, don't bother buying masks, don't wear a mask. They were telling people, send all the masks that you have into your professional medical people so they can wear them. So 
wait a minute, they're not effective, uh, effectual, but public's not aware, allowed to wear them, but you want us to give them to the hospitals, but they're not effectual. <laughs> what the hell? And, uh, Saw, and then they turn saw, right around and then they release prisoners. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you gotta be, you gotta wear a mask. So to me that immediately popped in my head when they did that, I said, well, this is going to open the door up for criminal activity because people are going to be just wearing a mask and nobody's going to think anything about it. They're going to see some dude wearing a mask and not think twice about it. Whereas, and under a normal circumstance, some dude walks in a convenience store wearing a mask, they're immediately thinking armed robbery. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, this whole thing seems to be a construct. Now, I'm not saying that the virus is not real because I know people that's got it. Yeah. Uh, there's a guy in the hospital right now that's uh, uh, married to a friend of my wife. And he got it. Consequently, after they opened back up, he went to the hospital to get an elective surgery on his neck. Two days later, had COVID-19. Now he's in ICU. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, so I, it I, seems that the. Uh, well, I mean, it, it seems that mostly the people that have it are at the hospitals, getting it at the hospital and spreading it at the hospitals. Yeah, well, I, I don't doubt that I didn't get something. That, and I, I, I'm really at the point now where I'm really questioning whether the the germ theory is a, is a correct theory on how these things actually spread or if it's more uh, about the terrain and the environment and, and, and that the cells just do this, this uh, process to eliminate waste. And if you're in a high waste load that you get – you get ill uh, to expel uh, right. certain toxins from the body. And so, you know, that might be the whole cause of illness. And, you know, germ theory is a theory. It's still a theory. It still hasn't been completely proven. And, uh, and yeah. you know, I've been getting into the, you know, the work of uh, Dr. Kaufman. And then uh, there's a really good book that uh, I dropped in my Discord about uh, what really makes you ill. Um, and, uh, if you can't, if you can't find, you know, that, that book or you have trouble downloading it, anybody can go to this website. It's called consen.org, uh, C O N C E N dot O R G, uh, consen.org. And you can find magnet links to, to, uh, books that have been, you know, important books that are censored or may have been even out of print or something like that there's some people that have you know uh, put these up on consent.org that you can go find them and download them another tool that you can use for that kind of stuff is a program called deluge uh, and if you're looking at the video that's on the screen for you on uh, mspwaves.com uh, you can see what i got pulled up here on my screen and it's called Deluge, and you can use Deluge to download these uh, these torrent files. It's a really good torrent downloading thing. So I just wanted to put those out as tools for everybody out there that's well, looking for uh, information. I'll tell you someone else that you could research if you want to get into some of the things you're talking about is Sherry Tenpenny. Uh, Sherry Tenpenny used to be a executive that worked for a pharmaceutical company. She was a, a physician before that. And then, uh, she got hired in at some point to some pharmaceutical company and then saw what they was doing and quit immediately and started a campaign against pharmaceuticals. Um, but she outlines a lot of what you're talking about and she has questioned whether or not the, uh, medical establishment has it right as well. Um, you know, and I, I've seen a lot of stuff too, dealing with pH and how toxins come and go out of cells that, uh, makes me question a lot of things. Of course, I don't, obviously don't have the answers. I'm not that, uh, not any kind of medical doctor or anything, obviously, but, uh, yeah, I don't have the answers. There, there are, there either, are, there are a lot of people out there. 
But but what does it do to our immune systems when we're dealing in you know, with a toxic environment on a daily basis? So I'm talking our water is super toxic, our food with the glyphosates and and all this is super toxic. The air we breathe with the chemtrails and what they're spraying on on people all the time is is mm-hmm. is toxic, and we're and we're taking up um, you know different things uh, like aluminum, barium, strontium. Uh, people have elevated levels of these. Uh, people have done independent tests and done hair tests and blood samples and seen uh, elevated uh, levels of these things in their body. Uh, I know my grandpa has even seen elevated aluminum uh, in his body. Um, uh, dur- in, in well, yeah, uh, the, uh, the sprays contain uh, aluminum oxide. Most of them do. That's a base element that they use and another thing I, I ran into this doing my aquaponics where you come across at some point where you start to realize that uh, these salts play a vital role in how cells uptake nutrients and you know it's funny that you bring this up about the sprays because these geoengineering sprays and let's use the correct term here because all if right. you use chemtrail, you're a you're a, a a nut job. But if you use geoengineering, you're a genius. Uh, so yeah. these geoengineering people, when they spray this stuff out, they use this uh, aluminum oxide and barium oxides, which are salt compounds, which means that the cellular structures are going to uptake them very easily um you know i I ran into that with my aquaponics i I found out that when a plant takes carbon dioxide in it takes it down to the root where it mixes with water and becomes carbonic acid carbonic acid then breaks down the mineral content into a salt and the salt then has uh available ions that can be absorbed by the plant as a nutrient it then uptakes that ion and then respirates out the oxygen left over. Um, and then come to find out you have the same thing that goes on with all mammalian type biology with cells, where they will exchange ions back and forth in an energy exchange through the pH. And, uh, you know, that book that I have, that healing is voltage talks about that, that stuff. And it's really an eye opening thing. Oh yeah, uh, and but at the, my, yeah, yeah. My the, point is, is that by spraying these salts out like that, they're altering the pH and making it so that the cells can readily absorb these elements that are they're raining down on you. Yeah, it's 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 amazing, and it's 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 part of an electrical exchange in, in, in the chemistry. Uh, when you're talking about this ion exchange and it's just more it's just it's, it's more evidence in the hat there that we live in, in in an electrical type universe i i sent that that uh one interview to you i think it's really cool for everybody to go check out is that uh coach guy from the higher side chats and greg carlwood and the higher side chats where they're talking oh about yeah yeah exotic vacuum objects and and what you can do by right. injecting high voltage into the uh uh you know uh into a needle type thing and then you can create these interesting plasma uh things and what if you know, we uh, the ever, all biology is is simply a condensed plasma type form. You know. Well, I'll tell you something I've discovered is that when you take something that's highly acidic and something that's highly alkaline, when you have those where they meet together, there's going to be a barrier that develops, and in this barrier zone, you will have an area where loose ions are created or loose electrons and there's an energy exchange there and it's what i call cold plasma but and oh well what's his name that that does the uh, the the water videos it talks about the ez water gerald <clears throat> the yeah gerald pollock the ez water is the same phenomenon where you have a 
like a plastic structure and then where the water is touching it, it creates a layer of structured organized water where the molecules all line up. Um, that's because the, the ions are locking together and then you'll have this available ions that are floating around on the surface of this thing almost like a plasma. Um, and his, mo and his stuff that he shows, you know, it's a very, very thin layer. But you get this chemically when you have acidic and alkaline where it mixes together. And you'll have things that'll come out of that where they'll recombine, you'll form into certain minerals. And then there's a certain small amount of material that's left over that's monatomic in nature that life will grab up and use to create cells out of. It's, uh, it's really a fascinating thing. Yeah, and one of the one of the books that really turned me on to this uh, to this idea that you know you have some kind of energetic field or something like that in biology is is the book Morphic Re Resonance by Ru Rupert Sheldrake, and and he does talk about this. He he talks about biology and the way that that biology actually. Uh, works to fill in an energetic field what what the what he calls a morphic field that exists in the field of you know that that the outer field of uh, what we can't what we can't see but it biology actually expresses a field and then it actually morphs into the field that it's expressing it's it's really it's a really wild book and uh it even goes into like how you know the the patterns of, of your thought and everything can create you know different outcomes of things uh for you know like uh you know the it, it's it's like uh you have two choices at every given moment uh or you know different choices at every given moment and then you can choose to go down a new tunnel of reality i guess is what you could say um anyways yeah. it's, it's really fascinating it's a really fascinating book. Uh, you can get over into some, you can get over into some heavy quantum stuff with that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> because you you get into these uh, multiple parallel realities and uh, where the psyche can bounce back and forth between multiple different uh, realities. That's where you get into the doggone uh, that uh, Mandela effect. <laughs> uh, yeah. You yeah, know, people remember things one way, and other people remember it and that's something else. And uh, there's actually some theoretical framework there that we're bouncing back and forth between multiple realities at all times. Consciousness is it's a uh, it's wild stuff, yeah. and that would probably be facilitated by the plasma. But uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah, so. <laughs> I don't want to get off over into that. People yeah. will be dropping off the, the program like flies. They'll be like, what, what? These guys have lost their mind. <laughs> so so this is some of the things that Robbie and I talk about, you know, for uh, long conversations and stuff like that. So, so anyway, that's a little peek of that. But, uh, but anyway, something awesome that I've learned recently is uh, – uh, pine needles and and the actual the uh, the amazingness of pine trees. Uh, I've I've really getting into pine trees because uh, the there's there's a lot of health benefits to pine trees. The pine needles themselves are are super high in vitamin C is what I've found. Um, they're the high they're higher yeah. vitamin C than what you can get from the little uh, ag absorbic acid that you can go buy at the store the little powder vitamin C or whatever. They've got a super high dose of vitamin C right. and pine needles. And so uh, you can do something. Well, with... I know. Go ahead. I know from running the mill that when we're milling pine, man, the bees show up in droves uh, because there's a lot of sap everywhere, you know, that pine sap. And those bees, man, they go after it. They come and get it. So it's it's got to have some kind of value but uh yeah yeah, yeah that's uh, i guess that's why they make that that tea out of the pine needles 
Yeah, that's what that's what I was about to say. You, you can make a tea out of pine needles, and all you do is you get some water, and you heat it up. and And I did this this past week. Uh, you you just all you gotta do is heat up some water, and then cut up some pine needles into uh, you know to little um, you know sections, like cut it into a th- third sections. And then drop that into some some hot yeah, water, like, not like, boiling. Like water. Yeah, not boiling water because if you if you're boiling boiling the water, you're gonna distill turpentine from the the uh, pine needles. And uh, while that is uh, good for you, it's a good it's a really strong solvent and a really good uh, anti parasitic um, thing. Turpentine is for the body. Uh, it just tastes like shit though. <laughs> So uh, you don't want to get it boiling. Uh, you just you just want to get it to the point where it's it's really hot, and then you steep the pine needles in there for a little bit, stir them around in it, and get that going. And then uh, you strain that through some kind of cheesecloth or something, and then add a little bit of honey for a sweetener. And it's a really good tea. It actually mm. tastes like a, a like a really good tea. It tastes like Christmas, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but but for oh, everybody dude. out there that you know if you're looking for some solutions on boosting your immune system there's uh, i don't think there's any better vitamin to take than vitamin c uh is super super great on boosting the cells function and the waste elimination methods and everything like that and and if you can get uh, a high dose of vitamin C from a free source, such as pine needles, if you get if you have pine needles uh, around your area, then you can uh, create some pine needle tea. Get out there, uh, you know, put a little honey in it or something, and and then keep yourself uh, at a higher higher level of uh, of health. And you won't get scurvy. You won't get scurvy. That makes me wonder what the pH. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me wonder what the pH of that uh, tea would be. I yeah. have to, I have to make some and test the pH on it and see what it comes out to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that would be interesting to see how it can, it may uh, alkalize, alkalize the body. Um, yeah. So we yeah. got a lot of uh, discussion. Yeah, vitamin D and uh, vitamin C. Yeah, very, very important uh, things for you. And in vitamin D, you just go out and get some sunlight, get some sunlight, at least 30 minutes uh, of sunlight mm-hmm. in the day. And, uh, and also here's, here's one of the things that gets told a lot is that cholesterol is bad. Well, actually you need cholesterol for the brain for one. And then cholesterol, when it interacts with, uh, the sunlight, it creates vitamin D. And so cholesterol yeah. is good in that way. Yeah, without without cholesterol, you can't replace your cell membranes, and uh, so of course you can. Uh, as with anything, I, you could take it too far, depending yeah. on the types of uh, fats and cholesterols that you that you take in. Yeah, you need good fats, good uh, and, uh, mm-hmm. and 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 stuff like that from like grass fed animals like uh that's one thing that i realized recently is uh uh from grass fed animals you get the vitamin k2 which is helpful for hair mm. it's strong healthy hair your nail nails like really creating strong nails um mm-hmm. healthy bones it's it's important for bone uh growth and repair and then um uh, collagen in bone broth is excellent for people that have bone issues. Uh, collagen uh, is used by the body to create a lattice so that they, the body can come in and lay down calcium over the lattice uh, to repair bones and everything. Right. So, so if somebody has like osteoporosis or something like that, uh, that uh, that they should be they should be drinking like bone broth and 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 uh, getting some collagen in mm-hmm. their body, uh, things like chicken's feet and uh, and pig and like uh, pig uh, pig <laughs> pig's feet or pig pig's knuckles and things like that, you know. So, 
Uh, oh, I've never been a big fan of that stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> Dr. Tennant talks about the benefits of actually eating bacon. Uh, yeah. he, he talks about bacon fat because uh, it's the, if you get it to where you have a, uh, an animal that isn't fed just a bunch of hormones and everything, the bacon fat can be good for you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, I have a, a buddy of mine that that's uh, we went to go to, over to his place last night and he just started uh, an operation with these sheep variety called uh, they're called Australian white sheep. And they they're like uh, the Wagyu beef of sheep. And they have like a lot of the uh, very even distribution of fat in with the in with the meat. And the fat is like, and, mm. and the meat is like really high in omega threes and uh, that vitamin K two because it's all uh, grass grass fed animals. Um, it, and it tastes delicious. A lot of lamb has kind of a little bit of a funky taste to it, you know, uh, a little bit yeah. of a gamey taste to it. But this one tastes you don't get any of that in the in the uh, in the lamb. It's it's uh, I've had some. It's really good. So. Well, I had a uh, I had a hemp supplement that I need to order again that had all three omegas in it. it had omega three, six, and nine, and uh, that uh, I felt pretty good taking that stuff. I ran out of it. I hadn't ordered any more, but uh, that's the only supplement that I've seen that actually has all three in it. Every one that you look at, you'll see it'll have three or six or something like that. But I've that's the only one I've ever seen that had all three. Yeah, yeah. We're, we just started a, a, a shit storm of bacon talk on here. And um, I'll tell you what, uh, for any of the ladies out there that ha- have a boyfriend or husband, uh, anything like that, buy them a bacon care package and show them that you really love them. <laughs> there you go. Buy, buy, buy them some bacon for Father's Day. Yeah, there you go. Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and put up and put in the card health care package yeah oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah shit. that'd be great so uh, <laughs> so yeah man um uh you know some so, some ideas for for what's going on right here you know and in, in my own personal uh, life, uh, going back to work. I, I finally got back to work over there at that prosthetic shop after they've been shut down for a couple of months. And, you know, it's just, uh, I got to get to a point though, where it's, uh, you know, I'm not dependent on that income because, uh, you know, if there is some type of second wave that might come and that's, they're talking about on the news and all that stuff too, that um, you know, I, I have no faith that uh, that I'm going to be able to either keep that job because they're going to possibly create new requirements, and uh, you know, I, I'm I'm just envisioning this, looking into the future, and what's what may be a possibility is that you have to prove that you've been vaccinated in some way or some kind of thing to uh, go back to work, and uh, there's all this talk about you know this uh, digital ID system now. Uh, which connects to your your medical records and things like that, and uh, and so anyway, I think and right that's going to be that's tied into that damn app. This contact that tracking tracing. app is tied into that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's it's tied into that, and so all of your all of this medical data from everyone that's around in that app area will be collected, assimilated, correlated, and sent over to. Google and Apple for them to disseminate out to the medical community along with your medical records and it'll send out all of that information to the government too. And they're they're getting paid a handsome fee for it, make no mistake. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so you know, these yeah, we just saw a recent story in Alabama here. I'll pull it up. Uh, Alabama is one of three states to sign on with Google and Apple for a new contact tracing app designed to slow the spread of coronavirus. 
Alabama, North Dakota, South Carolina signed an agreement with tech giants yeah. to use the tracing technology to develop COVID-19 tracking apps. 22 foreign countries have also signed agreements to use the technology. So, you know, we thought he being in here in old Alabama, <laughs> we're not going to we will be the very last ones to see this probably or something. But anyway, you know, this comes out in. Well, AL, see, AL. we don't have we don't have as many of the riots going on. Go ahead. See, we don't we don't have we don't have as many of those riots going on. I doubt you're going to see them trying to enforce the contact tracing while these riots are going on because they don't want to ID these rioters. Uh, yeah, because if they have uh, they have that system in place and you have a bunch of people with cell phones out there marching around rioting and stuff, then all that data is going to be collected and collated. They don't want that right now. So it, the only place you're going to see this contact tracing stuff go into place is going to be the predominantly red states. The blue states, they're going to hold out on that because that's where all the looting and rioting crap is. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, very well could be part of it, but and uh, if you don't if you don't think the government's involved in that in that stuff, you're out of your mind. Yeah, yeah, and you know these uh, these these democratic uh, people who want to bring in socialism are assisting that mess as much as they can. Yeah, so practical solutions, I, I would say for for any of this that's rolling out. I know there are. Um, phone shields that you can buy now which are practically they're like uh they're mm -hmm. little faraday cages they're like silver it's like a silver fabric lining uh that you can put it slip it in uh you know that would be one kind of thing you could try to do uh another thing would be to just only carry some kind of burner phone uh which you could just take the bat take the battery out of yeah. If you're going to travel anywhere, you well, disconnect the battery. If you need it for an emergency, that's not, you pop the battery back in. Yeah, popping the battery out uh, would might, would work for a burner phone, but if on your phone, that might not be an option because some phones have a uh, capacitor bank built in that has a reserve power so that anything that's Bluetooth can access the uh, CPU yeah. on the phone. It's still functional, right? Uh, even though the battery's out of it. So people think they're safe on that. Um, I would say what I'm probably going to do is I'm probably going to take a piece of tinfoil and I'm going to, before I leave, I'm going to turn off my Wi-Fi, my Bluetooth, put it in airplane mode, turn off all incoming data, wrap it in tinfoil, turn, turn the phone off, wrap it in tinfoil, just take it with me in case I need it. But don't pull it out and use it anywhere. Uh, and then when you get back home, you can unwrap it. And as far as the phone is concerned, it's never left. Yeah. 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 So uh, creating some, like a little Faraday cage around it. Yeah. That's what these little, these little devices, these little pouches are. Uh, they're like little Faraday cages yeah. that you can put your phone in and carry it around. But, uh, but you know, listen, like, if they want to do this whole contact tracing tracing app thing or and and do all this stuff, you know, you, you know, we brought up this thing like, you know, we just don't. We know that they're tracking us. We know that they're tracking us all the time, but uh, especially if you're if you're carrying a smartphone and they're tracking you all the time. But you know, don't make it easy for them. <laughs> Let's just say that. No. Make no, it no. a little bit harder for them. You, you know, know the fact that they're. The, the fact that they're tracking your phone doesn't necessarily give them an excuse to come knock on your door and shoot you up with a vaccine. But if you have your phone on you and then they can then say, well, according to our app, you came within 10 feet of someone who knows someone else who had COVID-19. Therefore, we're going to have to either put you over here in some kind of quarantine or you're going to have to take this vaccine or we're going to make sure that you're not going out into the workforce. And, you know, and that's where this is going. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they've, uh, there is a, that's, that's, that's actually what they're uh, looking to do is to set you off in you know, some kind of hotel room or something like that and quarantine you or whatever. This is all what they're what's being discussed, and, and um, 
There was a video that came out recently, supposedly, of a woman that uh, was taking her contact tracing training and all this stuff and came out and talked all about it. Uh, and and in that uh, in that video, it was talking about how, yeah, if you if you were in contact with somebody that may have been affected, you'd be quarantined for like 14 days and in, in like a. Uh, and in, if you don't have an area where you can maintain a certain amount of distance from other people or something like that, they'd put you in a hotel room or something. And, uh, and then, yeah, yeah, it's just ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. It's completely ridiculous. The woman I was telling you about the, yeah, the, the woman I was telling you about that my wife knows, uh, or her husband got the COVID-19 after going in for surgery. She's basically under a house arrest. Uh, she's in quarantine. Her and their son are in quarantine, mandatory quarantine right now. And they've basically got them under house arrest. If they leave their house, they could be arrested. And so, see, that's, that's what it's coming to with this app. So when you get your contact tracing, the idea there is to trace back anybody and everybody that you come in contact with well, doesn't so that, that they mean, can supposedly flatten the curve. Doesn't that mean but, literally uh, everyone? <laughs> I mean, literally everyone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but see, it opens the door. It gives them a legal avenue to, uh, to carry out whatever agenda they're wanting to do. Because the way the number nomenclature reads and all of this stuff it's really ambiguous and so you'll get to a point to where you don't have to have symptoms you don't have to test positive all you have to have is an accusation that you may and then all of a sudden you're subject to all of these rules it's like the and Salem so witch that's trials, where the man. yeah that's that's where the, that's where this is headed i mean we're going into what they call napoleonic law or, or maritime law. And uh, under the Napoleonic law, you're accused of something and you have to prove your innocence. And uh, the, uh, the thing that they've got going now up north with the doggone uh, the family courts and the Shia law, that's, that's under maritime law. They declare a county or something to be a docked vessel and then so many miles radius around it is then under that Shia law, according to maritime legal uh, proceedings. So that's how they can get away with g going around the Constitution and doing all this stuff and violating people's rights. Yeah, I, I have three. three. Uh, anyway, so what will happen is, is. Go ahead. What will happen is, is, is with this contact tracing you'll be digitally accused of being exposed. And then therefore you'll have repercussions both legally and socially, as far as the government's concerned. Hmm. That's, that's, that's where this is going. Yeah. So, so did you, the did only you way mean, to really fight back on that is to just not have your phone. Did you mean Sharia law or do what? Or did you mean Sharia? Yeah. Law Sharia or? law. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, this uh, up in uh, Minnesota up there, ironically, you know, where all this crap's going on with this George Floyd thing. Um, you know, they have certain areas of that state where they have declared a maritime law scenario for a dock vessel. And that gives them sovereignty outside of the United States Constitution. And so they can then instigate this Sharia family court law where they can basically make up anything they want to. And then when you, if they tell you like, you, you know, you're summons to court, if you show up, you're under their jurisdiction. If you don't, you're not. And, but you're by volunteer, by showing up, you're voluntarily saying I'm part of your legal system. And uh, that's how they're getting around this crap. Well, you know, getting into this information from the UR Law guys, uh, from TJ Mars, and, and uh, you know, I, I highly recommend looking into looking into him. That that you are literally two persons. You 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 are the captain of your vessel, essentially. 
Uh, and your birth certificate, your name in all capital letters, that is your that is your vessel doing commerce. Your and, vessel, yeah. And everything that exists today is all under uh, Universal Commercial Code, UCC. And, and right. That, uh, everything is a contract, so you have to you have to consider everything being a contract. Part of this part of the whole contract thing is to it's 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 a biblical thing where it says that you must first approach your brother with the problem, and you have to do it in like a uh, gentlemanly way. And so you never you never tell the 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 opposing side that they're you can't you can't say that they're wrong. You have to say. I accept, but uh, you have to put a conditional statement onto it. You have to say, on condition that you give, you provide a proof of claim uh, of, you know, your jurisdiction or your um, that anything that you're going to do to me is going to be safe for my health. Uh, this is the one way that people are fighting back against uh, 5G in local areas. And taking it actually to the to the courts and suing the companies for uh, give, having to give a notice of liability or proof of claim uh, that the thing is is healthy for humans and that it's uh, they can give a written statement that says yes this is is healthy for humans and otherwise the 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 lawsuit is for a lot of money you know you put a lot of money on. Um, you know, millions of dollars yeah. down on them to make them have to provide that proof of claim. If they can't create that proof of claim, then they have to do some kind of settle or settlement or something like that. If enough people do that and take it to these guys, then, then their pocketbooks, pocketbooks are going to hurt so much that they're going to have to have to uh, change their game plan at least. And it could, it could slow it down. I don't know, you know, if totally keeping it from rolling out, but uh, definitely could slow it down. Also, that's another uh, solution for any of this, any of these uh, vaccines. If they want to mandatorily vaccine all of the population, uh, you know, for being able to go back to work or whatever, then this is a way of actually approaching that. Is that you can say, I accept, you know, you're you're wanting to give me this vaccine on condition that you give me a pr uh, notice of liability, a proof of claim that that this is not going to, to, to harm me and that if, I, if it does harm me, then you owe me for all my medical bills for the rest of time or something like that. <laughs> that you right. make, it a, con well, you make a new I'll contract you a with story. your own terms. Yeah, I'll tell you one of my experiences with vaccines. Of course, you know, it was a vaccine that doggone paralyzed me and put me in the hospital and ultimately got me out of the military. Yeah. Um, so I spent two years in recovery over a vaccine. It almost killed me. So can anybody in the world sit there and tell me that vaccines don't do any harm because I've lived it. But they also don't have legal precedent over you like that. You have to agree to it. They'll tell you it's the law. I had the school system contact me about my daughters when they were in school and tell me that they were going to have where well, they sent a letter home, you know, saying that they were going to have these nurses there and they were going to be issuing out these vaccines. Please sign the form and send it back. I never signed the form. And so they called me, wanted to know why I didn't sign the form. And I said, I'm not going to sign the form. I said, well, sir, you have to sign the form. It's the law. And I said, no, it's not. Oh, yes, it is. It's the law. You, you have to do this. And I said, well, send the sheriff and arrest me because I'm not signing the damn form and you're not going to touch my kids. You know, and they just kept on insisting that, that, by God, I was going to jail. And I said, well, send them out. Nothing ever happened because they have no legal precedent at all to do it. You yeah, know? they just use uh, threats and threats of violence to intimidate you. Right, right. But now with this, with this COVID thing, there is a legal precedent. Obama put it in place under the NDAA. And so now that the executive order has been placed and the state of emergency has been declared, then we are now under the NDAA and there is a legal precedent. So they will try to say that it's legal 
but we're all going to have to learn myself included more of the nomenclature and understand their language because if we don't understand their language they're going to take us to the cleaners yeah on it. and uh you know by understanding their language and what sp specific things mean like you were talking about all caps is your vessel you know there's there's a legal formality that we're going to have to learn the language of so that when we get into that situation we'll be able to just spout out that language and then they'll be like well maybe we need to back down here and get somebody here to know something about this and um i think that's one thing that we can do that'll that'll benefit a lot of people and then obviously when you learn a little something about that about the nomenclature share it you know get around and, and spread it around so that uh, everybody will be on the same page so if you start having all these citizens all of a sudden know the language, what it means, exactly how it's carried out, and what the legal precedent is, then all of a sudden they have no power over you at all. Yeah, looking into a lot of this stuff, you know, a lot of these rules only apply to the 10 square mile area around the District of Columbia. And so a lot of these st uh, codes and statutes yeah. and things that are applied, you know, to all the other states, you know, we think that we're subjected to are are not are not laws. They're codes and statutes, and they only apply right. to the District of Columbia and and, and the surrounding areas. And so uh, the thing is, is that you have to you have to be aware that everything that you're doing to interact with the local uh, uh, state and local governments. Uh, it is all it is all a contract and, and you need to know how to you need to know how to interact with that and one of the tools for doing that is is to go to uh, urlaw.org and uh, there's some really great tools there uh, to go educate yourself on on what this is all about uh, uh, there's also um, a really great website that goes into a lot of this stuff it's uh it's let justice be done uh, i'm gonna put that uh in the um i'm gonna put that in the chat right here let justice be done it compiles a lot of the information about um uh, about all this stuff and gives you some points you in some directions where you can uh learn more information about all this stuff and, and learn what your rights are and how to defend yourself um, against the legal system. It's mental self-defense is what I would call it. So, um, <clears throat> so anyway, uh, yeah, some of the things that I've been trying to figure out is, you know, what, what can be used as, as local barter items. And one of the things I'm kind of thinking about uh, and, and a tip that I got from this guy, Stefan Verstappen, who is a survivalist guy <coughs> up in Canada. And I was uh, uh, fortunate to sit on a, a little group discussion with him. And uh, we asked some questions about, you know, what, what, are, what are some good things to have in a collapse scenario? Everything collapses, all the economy, the state collapses, all this stuff. Uh, two things that he said are going to be very valuable that always have value are 12 ounce bottles of vodka because at, in a stressful time, people are going to be looking to, uh, for any kind of thing that they can use to de-stress. Vodka is something that you can everybody can drink because it can be mixed with all kinds of stuff. And, uh, and it's kind of a, a universal thing. So 12 ounce little bottles of vodka could be used as a trade item or barter item for things that you may need food uh you know different uh toiletries different items like that and then uh tobacco so growing your own tobacco uh so they can make cigarettes you right. can dry it out you can make cigarettes and yeah you can have some you know smoking tobacco for uh your local area these are a couple of the items that you can think about uh to you know if there is an entire collapse of everything kind of scenario these things people know the value of people know the value of some cigarettes or you know some liquor <laughs> yeah 
Um, so, Smokuses and liquor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. If anybody's interested in in checking that out, um, I will. I'll drop a link to to him in in the in the uh, in the chat room as well, and you can go check him out. He's also he's got okay. Some- so I can just I can just imagine. <laughs> Go ahead. I can just imagine being in the line at, at the uh, the the supermarket or at the the store with four cigarettes. cases of toilet paper, <laughs> ten cartons of cigarettes, and a case of vodka. <laughs> 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 They're gonna be going, uh, sir, no, damn, <laughs> are you okay? <laughs> uh. I'm just preparing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's for the family. Well, you know, you drink all this vodka, you're going to need a lot of toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to smoke while I wipe my ass. <laughs> that reminds me one time I was shopping at Costco. Oh, I, I did go shop at Costco. I had a Costco membership at one point in time. I bought a bunch of stuff because I, I don't like to go shopping, so I would just buy stuff for like a few months or whatever and just stock up. Right. And, bulk uh, buy. Yeah, I did a big bulk buy, and then I was checking out, and uh, and the cashier was asking me, uh, uh, you know, it was like, is this all for you? And I was like, it's for the family? <laughs> But yeah, it was just for me. <laughs> you know, I was, I was, I was, I was like, yeah, it's, it's for the family, you know, you know. <laughs> but yeah, they were Jim, like, hell no, I'll go through this next week. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be back next week. I just, just, just the first look. I'll be back next week, my God. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, you ain't seen the last of me. (laughs) You ain't seen the last of me. I'll be right back. All right. (laughs) Just calm down. Yeah. So, so I just, uh, I just dropped that in the, uh, uh, in the chat room right there. If you guys are looking for, uh, a way to, you know, have, have a bunch of documents that you can use for your own survival tips and stuff like that. Uh, go check out that uh, Stefan Verstappen's survival library. I think that's a really great value. He's got a lot of PDFs in there um, for you know your own personal survival, and you can keep it and you can download it on a onto a little uh, SD card, and you can um, you know have that just in case you need to go into a survival scenario. I'm uh, the way that uh, I do this show and everything that I talk about. I always say prepare for the worst, but uh, hope for the best. So, uh, so that's yeah. it's. I tell you something else. Prepared. This COVID thing, this COVID thing has just about put an end to bulk buying. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they've limited uh, uh, the buys so on certain things, and uh, right yeah. now, right now we are really seeing a uh, a meat shortage. Uh, you know it. Well, and food prices mm-hmm. are starting to go way up. The the food prices are actually really going up. So, well, you know, you can't you can't have those meat processing plants open, but it's perfectly fine to stand six inches away from somebody in a riot. That's okay, <laughs> but you can't you can't be within ten feet of somebody in a meat processing plant. Yeah, so that's the. The hypocrisy of what's going on right now is just so out in the open right now. So, you know, that's this is the whole reason, you know, why I start uh, started the show is 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 looking into the future and looking what you know, what might be the outcome. I I knew there's some kind of economic collapse coming uh, in the future. I didn't know it was going to take the shape of this whole uh, bad Twilight Zone scenario that we got going on here. But, you know, it's always good to be prepared. It's always good to grow your own food, uh, no matter what the circumstances are, because of the way our industrialized food system sits. And I really think that we are going to go back into a more, you know, being uh, connected to the land and connected to our food. And and that's going to be the positive future that we can move into. 
Uh, if not, I think we really are moving into a world uh, that is this technocratic control grid where you're going to be eating yeah. uh, you're going to be eating roach developed protein <laughs> uh, burgers oh, at, at, at your local Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, you know you're gonna see a lot yeah. more sickness and a lot more uh, or you know control. I don't know if it was the Chinese or the Japanese one a couple of years ago came out with a uh, uh, a form of hamburger meat uh, protein that was actually recycled sewage, and so you'll go get your Impossible Whopper and it'll be recycled turd. Oh, delicious. Right. <laughs> Delicious, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. you know, I you know, I really do think that those are the choices that are coming upon us right now. Um, that that we have the ability now to move in a positive direction and and gain new skills and not see this whole. Let's see this whole thing as an opportunity or, or a way to generate new opportunity and what solutions can be created right now to get people to, you know, get back to the land and, and be more self-reliant and, and, and do all this. I th you know, it's instead of an obstacle, this is an opportunity I'd like to I'd like to see it as and uh, and what right. kind of skills and well, growth you know. Have. Take your skills out into the community and and uh, develop your local area right there as you know where you can rely on each other because I don't think this thing's over by a long shot, and I think that we've still got to go through a lot of trials on this thing, and if the playbook holds true, infrastructure will be next. They'll start doing attacks on infrastructure uh, so that. You'll have the power grid to start going down, water will start going down, transportation will start going down in various places. So go ahead and get yourself kind of geared up for that so that you can weather through it. And uh, by being decentralized, like you're talking about, and more self-reliant, you won't be nearly as subject to those issues when they come up. Yeah, and don't put your faith in... Put your faith in yourself and your abilities. Don't put your faith on external systems and people that are going to come and save the day for you. It's it's up to you. It's up to all of us to 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 actually change things in reality. And uh, and that's where yeah. it all stems from. And and I've been getting more into you know personal growth and development. And actually, you know. I do really believe that it is all the outer world is a total reflection of the inner state of of each individual human being on this planet, and so you know a big part of why we see such uh, such pain and suffering in the outer world is that you know there's so much pain and suffering internally in so many people. So, so that's a big yeah. There's show. a silver lining to all of this. Uh, you know what's happening here, and even my what my daughter, both of my daughters, as a matter of fact, have uh, been politically awakened because of all this crap. And I think that the population at large is getting woke up to what's happening. And if we can weather through this thing and come out the other side, we'll be much better off than we are even now because we'll have a more stable uh, decentralized uh, society and system in place and it's these people doing all this stuff are exposing themselves for what they are and it's waking people up and I think if we all band together and stick together uh, we can come through the thing come out the other side better off than we are today absolutely absolutely but I think that you know the big important lesson here is that for us all to look at is, uh, you know, are you going to look for external solutions and do you want to create another system that is this hierarchy control system or do you want to stay, stay decentralized and be your own personal, you know, sovereign on your own private property and everything like that? You know, what, which system is going to be better for, for you and and for your right. family and your community. 
And and if and if we and if this system does yeah, this collapse, decentralized system is is where we need to be, I, I believe. But uh, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to fight the existing system in order to get there. And yeah. there's a number of ways we can do that. We don't have to dig gum, uh, go out with a blaze of glory. You know, we can we can do it like you said, voting with our dollar, or not even voting with our dollar, but uh, doing things with our dollar that puts these people out because that's the only thing they understand is power and money. Right, right, and that is the most powerful you know, weapon that, that you have is, is going out and, and using alternatives to the dollar. If you can barter for something, do a barter or trade. Uh, if you can use, uh, if you can mm -hmm. use precious metals, use precious metals. Uh, you know, if you can, if you can do some work for somebody and trade for something, do that. You know, there's all types of ways instead of using the fiat money system, uh, and supporting things through, through your taxes or sales taxes and things like that. So, um, so yeah, these are some solutions that, that can be, uh, that you can use in your personal life. And I think, yeah, exactly what you're saying. It's all about, uh, taking that power away, which is, which is money. And, and one of the, one of the, um, insidious things about how our our system works and how the income tax works in this country uh recently had on the guest Paymon Motadehe uh who is the founder of Freedom Law School and he has uh, not paid income taxes for over uh 30 years I believe not paid income tax and uh in nowhere in the in the in the law says that you pay an income tax uh the the income tax on your on your labor and wages uh is never supposed to be it it's it was never supposed to be on labor and wages uh the income tax as defined is on uh capital gains on on uh like uh profits on a on a business uh, venture or something like that is is how it's defined and so somebody's actual uh labor and wages being taxed is is a form of slavery because this is right this is saying that somebody owns a piece of your time and so this is this is not even um this is not even something to to do and it's something to learn about and i i really encourage it that's another thing that i'd like to talk to everybody about is to go check out livefreenow.org. Go check out livefreenow.org. I'll drop that in the comments here. And learn about how you can uh, get yourself out of um, paying your income taxes and, and, and different methods and techniques on how to, how to do that. So um, – that's uh that's something to go check out and also if you can prove that you owe an income tax uh to livefreenow.org there is a uh there is a reward of three hundred thousand dollars if you can pr prove that there is a uh, uh a part of the law that says that you must pay an income tax and so uh yeah so far out. nobody's been able to collect it no one's collected. It's been around it. for a while, and I think it was a uh, half a million at one point. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yep. Well, yeah, it's still out there. It's still out there. So, so yeah. Yeah, I'll be right back. All right, all right. So, so yeah, guys. Uh, another <coughs> thing, another thing that I wanted to share with the audience and all you guys today. If you do live in the United States, another option for you to uh, take your money out of the system. I know a lot of people may have their their money. Well, some of some people may have their money in the the stock market and things like that. Uh, an option for you guys to get your your money out of the stock market and to get it in your own possession is to run your own self directed uh, LLC IRA. And uh, somebody I use for that, I do this myself, uh, is uh, Perpetual uh, Assets. Uh, 
uh, LLC. And these guys can help you roll over a an old 401k or a 403b or however you guys had it. If you have your money in the in the uh, stock market and things like that, then you want to have more control by owning uh, both physical precious metals, uh, gold and silver, and also and and holding those in your possession, uh, having checkbook control of your IRA so that you can. <laughs> Uh, invest in different opportunities such as land and businesses and um, uh, there's a lot of different things you can invest in you can you can invest in stocks if you like you can be totally uh, in control of of your stocks and everything and the stock purchases that you want to do through an independent broker thing like uh, 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 that exists out there uh, like uh, Fidelity or you know any of these little uh, any of these little independent brokers, you can do that. <clears throat> but anyway, it puts the it puts your money and your investments back into your own hands, into your own uh, personal uh, uh, manager. You're the personal manager manager of your own fund, and there's no third party risk where you're trusting some other company to uh, hold your funds and be the uh, be the custodian of your funds so that if there's any kind of, you know, incident where there's some kind of global reset in currency or anything like that, something like that uh, that goes down, that you have control over your own funds in the forms of physical precious metals, land, uh, in cryptocurrencies. They also provide the ability for you to purchase cryptocurrencies through Perpetual Assets, LLC. And, uh, and that's a, that's an option for anybody. I've used them. They're, they're amazing. They'll, they'll help you roll over that, uh, that, that old 401k that you have. They'll help you get the LLC started and ramped up and everything. They'll hold your hand through the whole process, help you with any of the questions or any of the issues that you have along the way. They'll get you set up and, um, and it's real straight. It, it, there's there's a little bit of paperwork to get done, but uh, as soon as you get that paperwork done, then then you're good to go. You have the uh, they have the full control, checkbook control over your funds, and you can get it out of the banks and uh, have your own direct control over your investment. And so, that's something I use, and and I'd like to share with you guys is as a tool that you can use to protect your wealth, and uh, definitely uh, will. Uh, Will Lair and um, Gus Demos are uh, are awesome dudes that run Perpetual Assets, and and they are really easy to to work with, and uh, and really great. So, uh, so yeah, uh, that's just a tool that I'd like to share with you guys, and uh, something that I use personally. So, uh, so so doing all that. And so let's catch. I'll catch up in the chat room here a little bit. We got a pretty nice video uh, talking about looking at container homes that use solar and water collection with a compost toilet. Uh, I just got a container home shipped, and uh, or it's not a container home, but I just got a shipping container shipped down to my land, and uh, they're not they're not too expensive to get shipped wherever wherever you are, and it could be a, a really good way of getting a little home started. On a little piece of property because they're, um, you know, the, it, it's all watertight. Everything's all sealed up and ready to go for you there. And really, all it could take is just adding a little maybe lean-to roof on it or something. And then uh, framing up the walls on the inside. And adding something like a maybe a little mini-split air conditioning system. And, you know, doing some other stuff. So, yeah, they are pretty, pretty cool at uh, getting getting something started at least for a real simple uh, structure on a piece of property without having to do a whole lot of prep work to get it in there so uh, so yeah so that's one thing and then so so Robbie you guys are working on a uh, completely lumber milled on uh, using the wood on on Lee's property to build him a, a little cabin out there Yeah, we're taking the trees from the property and milling it down into lumber, 
and we're going to build its cabin out of it and uh, we're going to try to build it without getting anything, uh, you know, purchased that we can get away with. There's a few things we're going to have to get. We're going to have to get some metal roofing and obviously plumbing and electrical supplies and, uh, you know, that sort of thing. But as far as the lumber goes, we're going to do the whole thing other than maybe some plywood and the nails. So, uh, you know, I'm designing the, the house right now using my, my 3D CAD program and I'm gonna generate him some plans and we're gonna get out there and take it from the standing tree to the finished product. Oh yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. So, yeah. um, so yeah, another thing that that Lee was talking about on his property was doing some kind of hydro hydroelectric power and running some kind of hydro power system off of uh, right. That. And so, yeah, I've been looking into that and I, and I saw a YouTube video of this guy that did it with a uh, washing machine motor, and he was able to produce. I believe he was able to produce like 600 watts continuously. Mm -hmm. Which is, you know, if you have a really good flow, you know, you can run that thing 24-7. And it would be a really great option for keeping a bank of batteries charged in in conjunction with... Uh, you could do it in conjunction with a, either right. solar or, uh, you know, some kind of uh, other generator or battery bank kind of system. So... Is that... Is that well, around a, here, in my place, I'm going to set up me a uh, windmill because I have more wind than I do the ability to do water power. Uh, at some point when I get the, uh, the pond fixed on this property, you know, I can build a spillway and put a water uh, turbine in. But for now, it'd be more efficient for me to do solar and wind because I, I, the wind constantly blows here. But now in yeah. his position, he's kind of down in the valley and he's got two large ponds and uh in his position he would be better off to do solar and water turbine so we're going to build him a spillway and uh funnel that water down into a, a turbine setup like what you're talking about so now and those washing machine motors we've got a bunch of those things left over from when we were doing our experimental research and we built those battery machines uh, because we use those Cabrio washing machine motors. Oh, yeah. And they can be rewired into multiple different configurations. Y yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, so, and, and, uh, uh, you know, you some, can set them up in a. Th sorry, I was just going to say that that's something that you ran into is that you realize that the, the whole uh, spiel that the government gives about being green and wanting to be sustainable is all a lie because. They don't actually care about that, and uh, that they uh, they it's all just a political move to have you, have people like them because none of them support it. Ah, I guess I had Robbie drop drop off the call, but anyway, yeah, yeah, they came up with this uh, this device that would regenerate batteries and things like that, and then. He came into a situation where he was talking to a local politician about all this stuff, and then, uh, you know, they they show up that they're uh, they're not uh, they're not on board with any of that, and, and admit that they are have no uh, have no uh, interest in actually being sustainable or green or whatever that they say in any way. So. Uh, what I just posted up there in the chat room uh, are a couple of Robbie's designs and a couple of 3D printed items that I uh, just pulled off the 3D printer recently. And there, uh, one is a vortex coupler, which is supposed to hook up to a two-inch pipe in the aquaponics system. And... It's what what its intention to do is to help vortex water in the aquaponics system uh, to increase the amount of structured water 
that is in the aquaponics system is is the theory and the hypothesis behind this whole uh, this whole design that Robbie's come up with, uh, based on the work of of like uh, people like Victor Schalberger and uh, Gerald Pollack, who talks about this EZ zone water, which is a uh, uh, another state that water can hold, which is partly. It's like partly crystalline and it holds a certain amount of charge, uh, negative charge to it. So, so anyway, that's the one of the, one of those designs. These are two designs. These are part of uh, our future efforts on creating a you know some some kits and systems that people can have and some education educational series on what Robbie and I are working on with is. Uh, the big goal is is to do uh, a educational site uh, with offgridaquaponics.com, and so maybe you want to talk about that for a second, Robbie. Okay, yeah, well, I keep getting booted off. I've got booted off three times now. Uh, seems like every time you start talking about something that touches on this plasma or the energy aspect, I get booted off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I got on I got on somebody's watch list when we filed those patents, and uh, so a lot of my communications are monitored. When I get into some of these sensitive areas, I'll get cut off or something will happen. But uh, as far as the aquaponics goes, uh, yeah, we we want to put together a website and have educational uh, videos along with actual PDF files that you can download and, and even go so far as have 3d printable parts that you can uh, download with the thing or you could just order some of these parts and some of the things are you know if you're not used to building things it would be easier to print or just buy than to to build something out of pvc um you know and that not not all of it is going to be this theoretical stuff. Like one one in particular is just a little, um, like a fence area that keeps floating debris from falling from one tank to the next on your filtration, and uh, that keeps your your biofilter a lot cleaner. So um, just little things like that. But you go over the biological process and and what all goes on, and I, I've discovered some more things when it comes to this pH and the the energy exchange between cells and plants uh, that I'll probably add back in at some point. Uh, but for now, I've got all of the basic chemistry and the build process laid out. So, Yeah, yeah. And so um, that's something that we're working on to get out to everybody and well, I just showed the audience the cut, the two parts that you designed that I got printed out that ended up really being really great prints. And so, uh, so I got to, next time I come down, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to leave those with you and I got to order more PLA for the printer because I ran out. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to work on, um, those were just kind of test subjects there, but uh, I really need to work on minimizing the amount of material in that printed part because I'm well, sure it was really heavy on, on using the material. Well, that's uh, something that I can adjust on my end as well. Uh, so, so yeah, if you, mm -hmm. if you do downsize a little bit of the design, uh, you can do it that way. I've also been trying to play around with uh, – there's a great program out there. The, uh, for anybody that that knows how to mess with CAD a little bit, it's free CAD. It's totally it's called free CAD. It's totally free for anybody that wants to download it and start playing around with it. And uh, so I, st I started to play around with those files in free CAD, and the and the farthest I got to modifying the STL files that you sent me was just being able to pull measurements off of a uh, off of the little STL file after I created a new solid part. Mm -hmm. From what you sent me so so yeah when right. when you pull in that, that stl file it's like uh pretty much like little i guess it's it's basically uh points in space i guess it's not a solid and so what they have vertex polygons 
Yeah, and so what the CAD program has to do is it, recon- it has to reconstruct the solid part from the uh, from the polygons and everything. So, uh, so yeah, I was able to do that and, and take some measurements and stuff. And so, uh, so that was the that was as far as I got. But I got a lot more to learn about free CAD and everything. But it is a free program out there for anybody that wants to look into getting their own CAD program and maybe dabble in a little bit in 3D printing and building your own parts, designing your own parts and things like that. So so check out free CAD if you want to go get a free uh, 3D pr- uh, free CAD software. That is actually pretty powerful, actually. Uh, also, I also wanted to, uh, since you brought that up, um, ask the people listening if they would be interested in something along the lines of uh, having like this aquaponic stuff in almost like a VR game format so that you could put it on your tablet or your phone or even your VR headset and you could bring the the file in and you could rotate it around, you could look under it and all of this sort of stuff and see what's what with the construction. And if there's any genuine interest in that, uh, you know, I've got Unreal Engine loaded up and it's easy for me to import into Unreal Engine. Uh, I don't have a lot of practice with the export out of Unreal Engine, but I can get it in there and get it into a VR format. I would be willing to work on that if people thought that that would be useful or that they would be interested in it. Yeah, what do you guys think about that out there in the in the audience? I know a lot of people that are, that are here hanging out in this audience are... are into uh virtual reality stuff i know there's been talk about uh people doing uh, i know crimson clad was talking about creating an overlay of some kind of a uh, virtual reality for her podcast and things like that so so yeah what do you guys think about uh some kind of virtual reality educational uh thing for learning how to do uh builds on aquaponics and things like that what are you guys thoughts on that uh. <laughs> that'd be interesting to see what people thought it might be overkill you know but i mean i do have all the domains and i have all the 3d software and all of that stuff so i'm just one of those high-tech rednecks you know yeah <laughs> live out in the woods on a big farm and and got computing power and skills out the wazoo so <laughs> 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 yeah, that's that'd be a good way to describe us, high tech rednecks. Let's say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's like, um, you know, this is this is one of the things that Stefan Verstappen was talking about. Uh, it, in a, a real Armageddon scenario, you want to be around people that are a lot like a lot like you. And so I was like, well, I guess I fall into the hippie redneck category or something like that <laughs> well, kind of a cross between uh, a, I, I don't, a hippie I and a redneck i guess i don't know how far on the hippie you are the modern the modern hippie yuppie crowd yeah i'm not lives I, in I've the never big gone, house and wants to wants to do the uh the keep up with the joneses thing yeah i've never um, gone i've never gone full hippie no <laughs> <laughs> But I've, uh, you know, I definitely have been going down the the whole road of the spiritual development and all that stuff. Uh, one of my one of one of the comedians I follow is Owen Benjamin, and I think uh, one of his comedy routines was talking about Idaho, and and he was telling the guys in Idaho that he was they were like, "You guys are doing pretty good in Idaho. Just don't let it slip into." Um, uh, you know, don't let too many Californians come in and uh, start ruining things. And your first warning sign is that you guys got your yoga studio over here. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> but uh, uh, I, I did enjoy yoga uh, for, for a little bit. I, I took uh, hot yoga. and But I, I do recommend to anybody that's going to do that, it's like uh, – um, don't drink, don't drink beer before you go do a hot yoga session. <laughs> uh, yeah. My daughter does a lot of yoga and she's got me doing some of these stretches and stuff. And I can, I could say it's, it's a good thing. It helps you, but I couldn't picture myself going to a doggone coffee shop slash 
yoga studio and being in there with a bunch of other people talking about how great the brew was, you know, and being there <laughs> doing their little thing, you know, I, I'd, I'd have to just pow, shoot myself in the head, you know. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And, that, you know. and, and, and that's one thing that, uh, you know, uh, God love them. Uh, you know, for, for wanting to, you know, some, some, some of these people, uh, and, and the, and sometimes it's the, it's the militant vegans that I have a big problem with. Like people that are like, you have to be vegan or you're like the most horrible person in the world. Well, it's like, why, you know, because, you know, if I'm, yeah. if I'm growing yeah. my own food yeah. and having respect for the animals and things like that, uh, and, uh, and and getting the proper nutrients that I need, I, uh, you know what? And and what if it comes down to a situation where you need the skills to be able to hunt and and fish and and be able to get that for your food? I mean, your hunt, fish, and forage. I mean, you know, it might come to that. So why not have those skills? Yeah. Uh, to be able to do those things. But I do respect people that want to want to do the vegan thing. But uh, you know. It's the militant vegan. Well, you know the uh, the militant push it all. The the militant vegan crowd, you know, obviously their uh, their farts don't stink and it does not contribute to the global warming. <laughs> right. So 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 I you know a lot of a lot of the stuff that um, when you get into the whole vegan thing, you know that they're trying to protect the planet and all this stuff. At least that's that's what a lot of them say. Um, that uh, that that you know where are you getting your food from are you buying it from a local farmer or are you growing it yourself you know otherwise you're probably can you know equally is contributing to uh to the issue of pollution and everything through the industrialized farming process where they use a lot of uh, petrochemical fertilizers on the on the crops and everything so you know yeah when whenever you well, point, yeah, whenever you about point it, the finger at somebody those, those you got three more pointing back at you so those kind of people, they won't, uh, they won't be satisfied with the locally grown stuff. They have to have it imported from two continents away, uh, you know, because it's a special thing that they want. But there's no consideration as to what it takes to get it to them uh, or anything like that. And they'll turn around and criticize you for having a cow that farts, um, <laughs> you know, so. Yeah. Yeah, so so I would like to you know be more promoting of uh, the regenerative agriculture, and and actually using you know all the animals and plants on this planet. Like well, there wouldn't be animals on this planet if they you know didn't serve some type of purpose on the on the land and everything, and they do. You look at you look at the farming techniques of Joel Salatin and and what he's doing to use the animals in in harmony with each each little um special thing that each one of the animals d does where the cows graze in one area for a certain amount of time then he rotates them to a new patch of grass and then you have the chickens that come behind the cows and they scratch through the cow manure and they they eat insects they they eat the the larva out of the cow manure to keep the pest cycle down and then you have pigs that'll go through your forest and they can open up new new parts of your field so that they'll eat all the grasses and they'll root up stuff in the ground and you can come back and plant grasses to create new meadows for yourself and and uh you know each each animal has its own little uniqueness to it and can be used in in harmony with the natural way that the the land works instead of this whole you know uh, modern industrialized agriculture system where we just have monoculture crops and and just plant you know a whole bunch of one thing in a field and you have to continually add petrochemical fertilizers and everything for to keep things growing yeah and the, the petro the petrochemical fertilizers are doing irreparable damage to the natural biological cycles that create a balanced system and so you wind up with land that is barren and is devoid of the fulvic component and it will not produce unless you put chemical fertilizers on it and uh 
that can be reversed though but you, you get into a little bit of uh, alchemical processes when you start talking about that because you have to get into this acidic and alkaline process uh, which is something I'm not prepared to talk about here very much because it's just a controversial thing yeah yeah uh, I talk about it a little bit but you know uh, so you're talking about like as far as uh, the body keeping the body balance and as far as the pH of the of the body and everything and the blood well the the land does the same thing uh, yeah. you get the land become acidic and then you you put out chemical fertilizers and even though you put the chemical fertilizer down the land is too acidic and so the plant then can't uptake the the nutrient even though it's there and so you have to come back and then they start putting lime on it and other things in order to bring the ph back up and, but uh as long as you're using those chemicals in there and not going natural with it see the the natural ph is a like a little wave you'll have some of it will be acidic and then along will come alkaline and it'll balance itself out and it comes it's cyclic keeps itself balanced when you go too far one way or the other you throw that balance out and you're wound you wind up with all these chemicals in there but the plant still can't uptake the nutrient because the balance is out and there's a fulvic acid component in there that helps break that down and there's it's a uh, a, a fungus basically that grows in the soil that you destroy that helps balance all this stuff out if you don't have it in there then your organic stuff won't grow. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, the work of the permaculturists, uh, Bill Molson and Jeff Lawton and all these guys, uh, you know, t talking about how, you know, proper feeding of the soil and bringing in carbon back into the soil and using, you know, things like wood mm -hmm. chips and, covering the barren soil so that you retain moisture and actually just build soil faster. And, uh, uh, um, uh, is a more balanced way in, uh, you know, nature's way because in, in nature, you don't see any barren soil. You see, you know, forest, it's all covered with, uh, you know, the leaf matter, uh, so that it decomposes to create new fresh soil for, uh, more organisms and everything to live in and it's a you know it's a it's a regenerative cycle right it it layers itself and we see this in aquaponics too you get these layered zones of biology and if you keep those layers intact and let biology do its thing then you're going to have a lot healthier organism because it is a symbiotic system you have to have all sorts of microbes uh, and all sorts of uh, uh, fungal systems and everything else in place in order to get it balanced out. And that's where the chemicals come in and start destroying that stuff. And so it can no longer function as its own organism or symbiotic organism. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it's... Uh... So what you're talking about doing with the, the cattle and stuff... And rotate them around you know it takes a little more time it's a little more involved you know and you have to get in there and be part of it it's a lot easier just to go out and buy a bag of fertilizer and throw it down yeah and uh you know everybody's into this doggone instant gratification stuff and it's coming back to bite us in the rear end yep yep and uh it just came up in the chat. Yeah, the uh, the alchemical the alchemical wedding, um, and brought up the whole Solomon. The temple of Solomon is actually the mm -hmm. mind, sun and moon, the right and the left uh, brain hemispheres. Mm -hmm. And when you can balance both right and left brain hemispheres, you've you've created a, a more holistic. You're a more holistic being, and um, and then uh, you know so. So it, it, it goes back to that, uh, that, that personal, personal growth and development and trying to harmonize with the, with the natural order. 
Right. And, you know, I've kind of figured out along the way, too, that if you keep this pH thing, like we were talking about, balanced out, you create these end state particles or these monatomic particles. Mm -hmm. And these monatomic particles then can be picked up and used by the the body and the consciousness itself to create these states that you're talking about. But it it also extends into the symbiotic life cycle around us. So they use this same process and as if we the more one we become with our surroundings by doing this stuff, the more it'll flourish. Yeah. So, so patient zero is asking about where the right and left hemisphere brain stuff comes from. That's, uh, mainly by diving into the work of Mark Passio and, the this is, these are concepts in the hermeticism, um, and the hermetic, some of the hermetic principles. Uh, these are also some of the things yeah. that, uh, are discussed in, in Freemasonry and uh and mark passio goes into what what these symbols and things and in the and what all this is talked about in freemasonry on their tracing board and you have uh their tracing board that you have the sun and the moon and then these the he goes into all of that and uh so so if you want to go deeper into that i i, I recommend checking out um uh, what on earth is happening dot com. Yeah, you can also look up some of the ancient texts as the Hermetica and Hermes Trismegistus. And you can get into some of that stuff and it dives in pretty deep. Yeah. Yeah. And uh it, it is very profound. It is it is the nature of uh you know who knows where this this Hermes guy came from? Uh, there's a Billy Carson guy out there that talks about how Hermes may have been Thoth, uh, and was a car was a carryover from an ancient human civilization, <coughs> that mostly got wiped out after the after the great floods, and so maybe Hermes was Thoth. I, uh, you know, Billy Carson kind of makes that connection, but that is fascinating, and and even. You know where these hermetic principles come from is is really fascinating too it's it's like uh it's like you know the way that things are in the natural order and express to people that are are had have ears to listen and eyes to see and it's uh that that can be a, a whole topic for a whole show so <laughs> we're coming up on the end of the show Robert. Yeah. thank you so much for taking the time to come and hang out with the audience and everybody today I appreciate you uh, taking your time out of your day to come on and talk with me and uh, get, keep me up to date with what you got going on and, and the audience and everything. So thank you so much, man. I'll leave you with the last word and uh, stay tuned for Crimson Clad and uh, Steam Wave Saturday. Well, as far as the last word goes, uh, just don't get sucked into all this political crap going on with these riots and everything and get out there and, uh, and try to become as self-sufficient as you can and be able to stand on your own so that you can weather through this stuff and uh, come out the other side better for it and uh, uh, do some research of your own look into some of these things that we've talked about and if you really want to dive deep you can get into this hermetical principle and uh, start looking at symbiotic relationships between yourself and uh, the biosphere that you live in and, and just take it from there and it it will uh it will do a lot of things for you you'll get uh some spirituality out of it as well so awesome anyway i i'm gonna leave here and go work on a chicken coop and uh and try to introduce some new chickens to my existing chickens but i want to put a fence up in between so they won't get at each other for a few days <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> all right all right brother appreciate so, it so all right well have a good one and uh we'll talk to you later all right buddy later <laughs>